unacceptable to me. That's why I have committed to making the plan for 2009. It will be the largest, the most strategic, and the greatest plan in Oregon history. Specifically, I have asked the Vision Committee to incorporate climate change into our transportation planning in four areas. One, low carbon fuels. Two, vehicle technology improvement, including a shift to plug-in hybrid and electric vehicles. Three, reducing vehicle miles traveled. And four, improving the transportation system efficiency. Last year, California adopted a low carbon fuel standard that will require a 10% reduction in the greenhouse gas content of all transportation fuels sold in California by 2020. At the same time, California gives the marketplace the flexibility to find the most effective ways to achieve this standard. British Columbia last month followed California in moving toward, forward with its own low carbon fuel standard. In or it, Oregon and Washington follow suit, the entire West Coast transportation fuel supply will be standardized toward this lower carbon fuel future. We, as citizens of Oregon, should accept nothing less. With respect to vehicle technology improvements, Oregon has already made significant progress by adopting clean tailpipe standards along with many other states across this country. When implemented, these standards will require car manufacturers to significantly reduce greenhouse gas emissions from tailpipes and offer much better choices of higher mileage vehicles, including plug-in hybrid and electric vehicles. Unfortunately, the current administration in the Capitol and the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency have thrown up every roadblock at their disposal to prevent this standard from moving forward. Oregon, along with many other states, are currently litigating the refusal of the EPA to grant a waiver to California because this issue, and it's the reason we are in court, is too important to let politics trump good public policy. Stricter emission standards is just one mechanism to help us reach our ultimate goal. That is why I have asked the Vision Committee to explore what we can do to make Oregon a center for electric car technology, manufacturing, and infrastructure development. This is why <laughs> this is one of those challenges that permits, or that presents, I should say, opportunity because Oregon can be a leader in the emerging vehicle grid system under conceptual development. Along these lines, we also need to encourage Oregonians to drive alternative fuel cars. I am committed, and I have committed, state government to continuing to lead by example. For several years, we have been transitioning the state vehicle fleet to alternative fuel vehicles. This includes cars run on biodiesel. We have been so successful that Oregon has won a national award for being the greatest state vehicle fleet in the country. Building on this success, several state agencies are working with other partners to demonstrate plug-in hybrid technology by converting standard hybrid vehicles to plug-in electric vehicles and developing the associated infrastructure changes that are needed. But this is just the start. We also need to find ways to make it easier for individual citizens to access and use plug-in hybrid and other alternative fuel cars so these become the vehicles of choice. We also need to research new ways to reduce vehicles' mile, miles draft travel. Earlier this year, the Washington legislature approved a statutory target to reduce the number of vehicle miles traveled in that state. If Oregon follows suit, 
We will. We need to do so in a way that provides technical tools to businesses and local governments for achieving those reductions. For instance, we can expand our existing tax credits to businesses that encourage telecommuting, carpooling, biking, and the use of public transportation. We also need to be mindful of the strategies that will work for not only the Willamette Valley, but also for rural Oregon. Finally, there is the issue concerning increasing transportation efficiency. We have too much invested in the existing transportation system to just start over. So we must look at the system we have and identify ways to make the system more efficient. We can do this by targeting our rural investment, our road investments, to specific bottlenecks to help improve the flow of traffic. We can manage the speed of vehicles on the road to make sure that they are in the most efficient fuel ranges. We can clear crashes and stalls up off the roadways quickly to reduce the congestion associated with those non-recurring incidents, which can be as much as 50% of travel delay in this state. We can adjust traffic signal timing to minimize vehicle delay and idling. We can work to better integrate freight movement across and between modes. And perhaps the most significant thing we can do is introduce performance-based pricing into our transportation and highway system. This is something. This is something called congestive pricing congestion pricing. In plain English, tolls that vary by time of day, by location, or by congestion level, so that those who are using the highway at the most desirable time are paying more to do so. It's simply supply and demand economics. We're not going to get there tomorrow, but we should start thinking about how we can move in that direction today for the future transportation needs of our state. I came here today to present a new way forward on transportation and climate change. Building and maintaining traditional transportation systems is a great challenge. Building and maintaining sustainable systems presents an even greater challenge. But these are the Oregon challenges that we must collectively answer. Our transportation infrastructure is whole, woefully outdated. That means a no-build approach is simply not an option. Instead, we need to modernize, repair, and maintain the current structure, and at the same time, provide Oregonians with transportation choices, including public transit, pedestrian walkways, and bicycles. I know that with the talent of those in this room, serving on many of the committees that we have, and those in the legislature, and with the support of the citizens of this state, we can and will pass a transportation package in 2009 that is greater than anything we have ever done before. And we can accomplish this vision because the people of Oregon are innovators, national leaders, and citizens of this state, this nation, and this world who dare to dream of a climate-friendly transportation system. This form will bring us one step closer to making that dream a reality. Thank you very much for inviting me to speak today. I look forward to the ideas and the debates that will follow. Thank you very, very much.